this is just gonna be a quick video of loading a mag. This is my oldest mag using uh, cheap ass H&N excites. No O-ring on this one. What happens with no O-ring is sometimes the pellet goes a little too far. It makes it a little harder to rotate to the next hole. As you can see, still not hard. This one I'm going to load. Oh, that one's got a jacked up skirt. Oh, just fell out, just like I was saying. Keep that one horizontal. I'll load up the gun now. I'm going to turn the power all the way down on low. You see the power adjuster here. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. On the other side here, there's a knob. That's the power adjuster. On this side, it points to minus, plus, or yeah, one, two, three, four, five. So people who talk about this gun often refer to power level. I'm just going to leave it on the lowest power level because I'm just shooting here in my basement. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull the cocking lever back. Take this uh, magazine. Put it in there. Goes up at kind of an angle. Cocking lever goes forward. That's it. Then all we have to do see zoom in a little bit this is the safety that people often talk about and they're like oh it's a terrible idea to have that in the trigger but unless you're just you know brand new to guns and you're just totally bumbling around down there it's not too hard to push it out from the right side or push it in from the left side make it safe all right let's shoot a couple of targets I don't remember where this one is shoot, uh, where the gun is shooting with these pellets at 14 yards on low power. My scope is uh, an Athlon Argos, six to 24 by 50. I'm shooting here in the basement at uh, 14 yards. Just zoom in here. So that's the target we're shooting at. Let's see how I can do here. I'm going to shoot this at about 16x. Shoot, uh, I don't know, 10 rounds maybe. Sitting on a pad on the floor. Aimed against the wall. because this is low power. That's it. Okay, so with that, let's move on to the, the meat of the review. I'm 
Maybe I should zoom in on the group first, huh? Guess you could call that one ragged hole. And with, trust me, with JSB pellets, it's, it's really just one hole. These are just my planking pellets though. Alright, so I'm just going to do some basic pros and cons of the rifle. Uh, first of all, the stock finish is, uh, is excellent. It's a Minnelli stock. You can probably see there's an M right there on the stock. Which is, means it's a Minnelli stock, so they outsource that. I'm sure Air Arms can do a good job on their own, but uh, Minnelli does an excellent job. The checkering is nice and sharp. You've got uh, black and a white spacer before the butt cap, which is a different kind of wood. This is the Hunter Green. Um, it's just a simple poplar, which is uh, nice and light. And they've got um, an area milled out here below the cheek piece to make it even lighter. Kind of a nice checkering pattern there. The checkering's nice and sharp. Uh, another pro is that it's pretty light for a full-size rifle. Uh, weighs less than my Hammerly 850, weighs less than my old Marauder did. Um, you know, it's not too bad. Not as, not as muzzle light as a uh, bullpup, but it's pretty light. Um, continuing the cons, since it has the adjustable power, it can shoot just about any pellet well. For example, people always want to know if their gun can shoot polymags well because they perform so well on, um, on varmints. But the thing is, polymags don't, don't like to be shot much above 800 feet per second. So if you have a gun that shoots at 30 foot pounds, it's going to be shooting them way too hard to be accurate. So with this, what you can do is you just dial it down until it's around 800 feet per second and they'll shoot accurately. Um, in this case, you would need the polymag shorts. Uh, the original poly mags are too long for the magazines. Uh, as I mentioned before, the fill probe design I really like. It's about the best fill probe design I've seen on an air rifle. It's not a traditional probe, but uh, the fact that it's not traditional, don't let that dissuade you. It's really a good design. The overall fit and finish is also excellent. The, uh, the action is, is nice and smooth. Um, one thing is you don't want to cock it and then let go of it and let it snap back. You'll break the action if you do that. Um, the adjustable power level, in addition to making that so that it shoots the most possible pellets accurately, it also kind of makes it a do-it-all gun because here I am shooting in my basement at, I don't know, maybe 8 or 10 foot-pounds at the power cranked way down. But I could also go out in the woods and shoot 30 foot pounds at 80 yards, no problem with the uh, you know the heavier pellets. And by the way, its favorite pellets seem to be JSB 15.89 and 18.1 grain. Uh, the trigger pull is crisp. I haven't done anything to adjust how light it is. It's not the lightest one I've ever fired, but it's so crisp, and it's a reasonable level, maybe between a pound and two pounds. I'm not going to mess with it. I really like it. Um, and also, as I showed you, um, as I'll show you before or in a different part of the video, it's not bad to hand pump. Um, from 170 to 200 bar, 40 pumps, no problem. And from 150, which is if you really run it down low, I don't know, 50 or 60 pumps, not too bad. And it's since it's only 200 bar, 2900 psi. It's, uh, it's, the pumps are not that hard either. Uh, so that's the, uh, the pros. The cons, um, and this mostly just minor things here, but just something that for a $1,000 air gun, you'll notice here the air tube is a gloss finish and the outside of the shroud is matte. That's kind of weird, I think, don't you? Not, nothing that affects the function of it, nothing that makes it a, a no-go. Um, 
I think it was designed for the UK market, the 12 foot pound market. Uh, it's a fully shrouded barrel. And uh, if you look back here, you can see the exhaust for the, uh, fill, or for the uh, shroud. But it's not that big of a diameter. So at 12 foot pounds, it's, it's, it's quiet enough just with the shroud on it. But uh, for the FAC version, you can see I had to get an adapter. I got that from uh, eBay.uk, and then I've got a TKO uh, six-inch muzzle brake on it. And now it's it's really nice and quiet, but it's also 43 inches long, which is kind of bogus. You'll have to be careful with it when you're uh, humping it through the woods. Um, as I mentioned, when the talking about the magazines, it doesn't retain the last shot in the magazine. Uh, it'll keep it from going too far forward if it has a good o-ring but if you turn it the other way it'll just dump right out the back so not an awesome magazine design especially considering how expensive they are uh, and this is like some a lot of these kinds are just kind of nitpicking I have to admit but look at that this is like a full-on recoil pad this is not a 12 gauge shotgun where you need <laughs> a full-on recoil pad right they could have made that a lot thinner and extended the stock back a little, you know, another half an inch, and uh, and it would make the uh, the balance of the gun even better. So, you know, if you've had any a gun any length of time, you know that over the years, that rubber gets brittle. These these little um, baffles start to crack, and it just turns to shit. It would be better to have just a you know a quarter inch uh, butt pad, and don't have to pretend that it's absorbing all kinds of recoil. Um, on the adjustable power settings, let's see if I can get a close up here. There's just a thumb screw on the other side of it, and you can stop anywhere. Uh, the markings are pretty precise, the, the line is pretty precise, but you can't get exactly back to where you want it to be. So if you're trying to get super precision shooting at 100 yards or something, you're going to want to, you know, pick one power level and just lock it there. If you take the action out of the stock, there's a set screw in the bottom that'll let you lock that power level in one place. It would have been nice if they had detents. They got five power levels, just have five little detents there so that it's more repeatable. You can come back to the same place. And then, as I mentioned, uh, it becomes quite long. I can't even get the whole gun in <laughs> without scrolling it here. It would be nice if they made a bullpup version. I know that they came out with the Galahad, which is their bullpup rifle, but it's $1,500, not all that highly rated. Um, why not just make a bullpup version of the S510? I don't know, seems like a missed opportunity to me. You could make it the same price as an S510, and then you'd have something to sell to the bullpup crowd. And then the last con, I guess this is it's not really a con, but it's just kind of like the market is evolving. And in a thousand dollar high end air gun nowadays, people are expecting a regulator. So get about 40 good shots per fill on this, just the way it is shooting from 200 bar down to about 150 bar on full power. But if it were regulated, you probably would get twice as many shots. Uh, a lot of people are buying these and putting in um, either lane or Huma regulators. Uh, to take advantage of that. I've got a PCP regulated uh, Hammerly 850 and it gets you know 64 to 80 shots per fill. I mean like good 20 foot per second shots. Uh, and this one you know about half that. So anyway thanks for for watching guys. Uh, just I don't want to crack on the, on the rifles too hard. This is an unsponsored review as usual. I bought this with my own money. If I were to have one uh, 22 caliber PCP, maybe even one PCP at all, this would be the one that I would keep. Uh, it just does so many things so well. It's got the Walther barrel, it's fully shrouded, decent number of shots per fill, easy to pump, uh, super accurate. You can shoot it in your basement at you know, 6 to 10 foot pounds and you can shoot it out in the woods at 30 foot pounds, uh, 22 caliber. It's just is a great do-it-all gun. So, thanks for watching.
Uh, look in the uh, the comments section below. I'll post some uh, some crony data for you. Probably some other stuff too.